Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am here today with someone very special. Her name is Tag. Yep. She is the artist formerly known as Terry Ann Gustafson. We'll talk a little bit later about how she got that nickname. But during this, I will be calling her Tag because that is her nickname. Tag is familiar with change. She has made numerous changes throughout her life. Her first leap was when she went to technical college out of high school, where she started her first business. From there, she went to California and was a nanny. Shortly after her father disappeared in 2007, do you see the, do you hear the mystery happening here? (laughs) Tag has given us like these little teasers. That's how special she is. Shortly after her father disappeared in 2007, Tag returned home to assist with the day-to-day running of the family farm. And last year, she decided another leap needed to be made and resolved to start her own business as a virtual assistant, designing and maintaining websites, as well as creating graphics and video editing. I will tell you that Tag is one of my favorite people in the entire world. The very first time I saw her, I had just a special love for her. And it has just grown the more I've gotten to know her. I've never even met her in person yet, but I so look forward to the time I do. Welcome, Tag. Hello, I'm glad to be here. (laughs) And if you are not watching this on YouTube, please go. Because this is one that you really, really want to see, at least for a little bit, um, on video. And we do have the YouTube video up at the same time as the podcast goes out via audio. And we'll have the link to the YouTube video in our show notes. Here's There are two big reasons why you want to. Number one, Tag is beautiful and has a beautiful tiara on. We're both wearing tiaras, of course, because we're princesses. <laughs> we're special. We celebrate life. Exactly. And the other even more important reason is Tag is truly an artist. And you can see on the wall behind her several pieces of her artwork. Tag, you want to mention those? Look how beautiful those are. Yeah, there's about four hanging behind me on the wall of my office. I change them out because I have over 200 of them in my garage. So, <laughs> Wow. And I am the proud owner of one. And I love mine so much. Will you tell everybody um, how you created mine? How, why you created mine? Um, It was for the October um, VV event. And it was a talent contest. And um, I won. (laughs) Uh, There were a lot of winners, but I I did did win. And um, Tag won. That's right. Yeah. And I do spray but paint. But I art. want even more because I got the artwork she created. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a video of the spray paint art as I was doing it because it takes several hours to do a painting because you have to let the layers dry and stuff. So um, I made a video and condensed it into like a couple minutes and played some music in the background for my talent. So. Yeah. And she, you couldn't tell, you know, of course, when she started, you couldn't tell it was going to end up being, and it was so fascinating to watch it, watch as it progressed. And it ended up being um, my brand colors and my tiara. And so beautiful. I love it so much. It was the tiara that got me to come to, um, to your program in the first place. Because I always have worn a tiara every once in a while around the house. And so I I did not realize that. And when I uh, was on Facebook, I always scroll past all of these programs and stuff. You know, you can do this, you can do that. And but I seen the tiara, so I had to stop and check that one out. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, that is hilarious. And probably back then I was wearing my little toy tiara. I, I have upgraded my tiaras to much nicer, much more like the beautiful one you have on today. I love yours. So, with the <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so tag, I want to go back to some of the things that you mentioned in the bio and have you expand on that. So your first leap was when you went to technical college out of high school and you started your first business. What was the first business you started? Well, um, it was probably a bigger leap going to technical college than it was starting a business because um, at the time I was just learning that I have a mild form of dyslexia and um, like my guidance counselor in high school told me to get a job as a waitress or a cashier because I would never make <gasps> it in college. Oh my so gosh. I went to college to prove him wrong. <laughs> Wow. And when I was there, I started selling um, stuff out of a magazine, just, you know, knickknacks for the house and stuff like that, kind of a suitcase sales type thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was horrible at it. It ended up costing me about $10,000. So, And you know what? That is so interesting that you're talking about that. And then it cost you about $10,000 because I just did an interview with a journalist yesterday and she wanted to know financials. Uh, like how much money have most people already spent on starting businesses? And I said, well, if they've tried any kind of MLM, while it seems like it's going to be inexpensive, most people end up spending about 10000 in their first year and usually don't make a profit. And I said, I know I was one who I was very successful in my MLM business and made a lot of money for the company, literally millions. And I the highest profit year I ever had ever in five years after making the millions was $10,000. Most years I made no profit. So I totally understand where you're coming from. And by, but by the way, I don't regret having done it because I learned so much. I learned what I don't like. (laughs) I learned what I'm good at and not good at uh, and what I needed to work on. How about you tag? The same thing. I mean, I, uh, I learned a lot from it Um, and I have learned over the years that um, when I was growing up, I kind of felt like, you know, I was going to marry Prince Charming and it was going to be happily ever after. And um, this year I've been looking a lot at my life and the fact of the matter is I'm 50. I have not met Mr. Right. Um, So uh, I'm just, decided that you know there is no knight in shining armor coming and I have to be really grateful for how and where I was raised Um, my parents were wonderful there's four girls in our family um, and we've just always been um, pushed to be the best we could be and that's part of um, the huge mind shift that's happened for me over the last year since I've been in your program. Um, I've been doing a lot of mindset work and realizing that what I've always thought was just a, for instance, back in October when you bought my painting and when we did the event, when somebody would give me a compliment, like you said, it was a wonderful painting and stuff. I would just cringe inside because I would feel like I'm not good enough. There's no way I can be good enough, you know, and I've learned that's come from my perception of things that people said, and it's not necessarily they were trying to be mean or anything. It was how I perceived what they said. And that makes a big difference when you look at the past through a different telescope, you see that, that, There is no, you know, I am talented. I am creative. Um, People need my talent. And if it's editing video or if it's creating a painting that goes on their wall, you know, it can be, it's a talent. And there's nothing wrong with taking pride in my talent. So, and that's like, oh my gosh, huge to me. You need to celebrate your talent. You're, if I, 
I would love to be able to paint like you. I'm just glad I'm able to admire paintings that you do. Uh, to me, uh, that's my talent. <laughs> I admire the paintings that you do. Um, because, I mean, like the one that I'm looking at right now, the uh, with almost the star effect coming out, yeah, the, moon the, and mm -hmm, the, the way you do, and really all of them, but the way you do the lighting in there, it fascinates me. And I can just look at it for a long time. I don't know how you do it. It to me, it's magical, and I think that's really, really incredible. That it's so magical. I want to go back to two things that you said. One is that you were just learning that you have dyslexia, and um, you know, <laughs> the fact that you're 50 years old. If you didn't go look at the video yet, uh, do because Tech looks like she's about 20. <laughs> when I found out she recently turned 50, I was like, what? How? Why do you look so young? You're freaking me out here. Um, so, uh, you know, back when you were going to school back then, you know, and I know because I'm 64. So, you know, I lived in that era, too. They didn't know about dyslexia. They, you know, they just thought. What did they label people as back then, like learning disabled almost or something? I don't even know what they called it. It's interesting because throughout my elementary and high school, they would put me in these reading programs to improve my reading. And they would take like a little machine that would like speed up going down the page. And I was supposed to speed up with it. And that doesn't wow. work when you have dyslexia. <laughs> no. No, that just frustrates you, doesn't it? So the, how I found out I had dyslexia was through a television show. Bill oh, Cosby, so Theo on the Bill Cosby show had dyslexia and he was explaining what he's seen and stuff. And I'm like, you mean that's not normal? <laughs> I didn't know that it wasn't normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is so interesting. And I'll bet you weren't able to describe it very well to people either what you were seeing. No. I, I mean, I just thought it was normal. I didn't try to describe it to anybody because I didn't know it wasn't oh, yeah. what they seen. I just thought they were better right. at seeing it and translating it. Oh, yeah, dyslexia, that would be really painful. Yeah, what happens with dyslexia is there's, uh, when you see something in your mind, you the picture flips in your eye and then flips back in your mind so that you see it. And in that flipping, something changes. It, it's not flipping quite right. So when I see something, sometimes there's a completely different word. <laughs> you know, I see letters that aren't on the page. I see, you know, it's not flipping right. And there's different color colors that can help with that. And like mm -hmm. you, you take a sheet of paper, like the transparent book covers type thing, mm -hmm. you know, with a yeah. little color in it. Um, yeah. And put it over what you're reading. And for some people, that's enough to to flip it correctly. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. So, that um, is so, what a simple fix that would yeah. be for some people to have. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So when I um, need, need to read something that I need to pay attention to, I can like contracts and legal documents and stuff like that. I can put a piece of paper over it, uh, a sheet of paper over it that flips it so that I can read it more clearly and concisely. Mm, wow. So what did you study in technical college? Um, I just basically took generals. Um, I just had went to technical college to prove that I could. Um, Good for you. After going out and nannying for a year or two, I came back and I did go to business college after that. Um, and I got a diploma in managerial accounting. Um, I was seven tenths of a point away from a two year business management degree. And Ooh. the reason that happened is um, I had a back injury the last six months of school. So my attendance went down dramatically because I was working two jobs at the time and going to school. Mm -hmm. And it was just too hard on my body to do that. So school was what kind of slipped my attendance did. And so I was seven tenths of a point away from a degree, but. And hey, here's the good news. It doesn't matter. 
because as a virtual assistant, no degree required. Exactly. Isn't that awesome? I know. I love it. Is I've almost got it paid off. <laughs> Twenty-five <laughs> years later. <laughs> wow! Isn't that that's crazy, isn't it? But it's exciting that you almost have it paid off. But it's yeah. crazy how expensive school was. So, um, have you, you know, in the since all your time of learning about dyslexia and all of that, have you come to realize? Because I have that many, many of the most brilliant people in the world and the most creative people in the world have dyslexia. I've heard that. Yes. I like to think I'm among them. <laughs> you absolutely are among them. You absolutely are. Uh, I, and I'm blanking on all the names right now, but if there's somebody that you think, oh my gosh, they're just amazing and brilliant and creative, they're probably dyslexic <laughs> um, because there's just a lot of dyslexic people. And my interest in dyslexia started because um, when I met the man, met and fell in love with the man I'm married to now, I've been married to him for 26 years. His name is Tom. Uh, when we first started dating, I gave him a comic strip that I thought was funny to read. And I stood behind him while he was reading it. And I read it while he was reading it and I read it and I read it and I read it <laughs> and I read it. And I thought, I literally thought, Dag, I thought, does he not think it's funny? Does he not get it? <laughs> I, you know, I was starting to get my feelings hurt and f I, I'm not kidding you. I read it like 10 times. And finally he said, he laughed and he goes, oh, yeah, that's a good one. And I was like, I literally thought, oh, my gosh, there's something wrong with him, you know, <laughs> and and I, you know, we were brand new just dating and I didn't want to ask anything. But once we got to know each other a little bit better, I said, so are you does it take you a little while longer than normal to read? I didn't know how to say it kindly, you know, just yep. and he goes. Yeah, I have very severe dyslexia. And I'm like, what is that? Literally, I didn't know about it until then. And then I started diving into it. And he he has it very severely. Um, one, he, we have, he has two sons, two stepsons. One of his stepsons has it very severely. Um, and I will tell you, my husband is literally a genius. I mean, literally, he was tested and he is a genius. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the most brilliant men I've ever known. Um, and our son is a chief in the Navy and really, really good at everything that he does too. They just can't, just like you were talking about, uh, can't read as well. And it's funny because li even little bitty things, um, and I can't tease him about it because he's very sensitive about it as I can totally understand he would be. But you remember when we, there were uh, DVD, VHS, DVDs? that you would write like the, you know, that you would self tape, you know, like record shows and stuff. Yeah. Did you, you're, you're 50. I know you know yeah. about that. I, I keep forgetting that you're not 20, you're 50. <laughs> um, well, we, <laughs> back in that era, we recorded, we loved television. So we recorded a lot of TV and we got a whole bunch of those that we could record. So we didn't have to record over them. And he labeled all of them, labeled all of them, labeled all of them. And I looked at it after he labeled it and it said VT. And I'm like, VT, what does this mean? VT. They were all, all of them said VT. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it took me a little while. VT, VT, why did he put VT? And I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, TV for the dyslexic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I look yeah. At, you know, because. In school, in high school, I never opened a book, you know, but I got like C's without even opening a book. I mean, everything was yeah. from what You're I You're brilliant, heard, like he I is. Yeah. And that's how I, that's how I he learned is, too. is through sight yeah. and sound. Yeah. Do you retain everything that you learn really well? Because my husband, once he's got it, he has it for life. And for me, I don't. I can remember it for a little while, but then it'll be gone. But he retains it forever. No, I don't. I, uh, 
I, I don't remember as well. I have to see or, see or hear things a couple times before I remember it very well. But if you see or hear it a couple of times, do you remember it then? Because that's how he is. If he yeah. sees or hears, it, if it's visual or hearing, and he does a couple of times, he knows it. I mean, yep. and he'll bring something up and I'll be like, and he says, you remember when we learned this? And I'm like, no, I don't even remember we learned it. <laughs> <laughs> Much less what it was. So it's just, it's amazing the differences. Thanks for talking about that. And I think um, there's still way too much stigma around that, especially, um, you know, feeling like, like I know my husband feels, he doesn't like to talk about it. And I'm like, you're brilliant. Who cares? And he goes, I care. I said, okay. <laughs> so I hope, um, I didn't even know. I had no idea that you had dyslexia. So you have obviously done very well. All right, so you, then you became a nanny. What made you decide to become a nanny? Um, just wanted to try something different. And I've always been good with kids and stuff. So um, at that time, I think I was doing a lot of running because I've always, you go to school, you graduate, you go to college, you get married, you have kids, you get a nine to five job, you, you follow the rules, you know, and I've really yes. never been very good at that. <laughs> so I think I was running. You're a rebel. You're a rebel. <laughs> I am a rebel at heart. <laughs> but That's yeah, that I artistic part of you, I think, from, too. Yeah, I think I was just running away from normal, you know, yeah, I huh. I didn't do well in school and I didn't like school um, because it had a lot of reading involved and I didn't like reading. Yeah, no <laughs> so, joke. Yeah, uh, this is making me this is making me so happy that even when I originally like back in 2008, when I originally started my training program, I decided right away that I would always offer three options for how to learn video, audio and transcribed because I knew that people learned in different ways um, yeah. because I was married to my husband by then already <laughs> and well, knew it, his it, challenges. It, does, it with makes that. a big difference because not everybody learns in the same way. So yeah. you're, you're right. That's yeah. awesome that your program provides that. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I love about your program is, is hmm. it, audio and visual it, as well as the transcriptions available if I mm -hmm. wanted to read it, <laughs> but I don't like reading. Right. <laughs> um, so then your father disappeared and I don't know if you want to go into that or not, but um, was it, it a mystery that it disappeared? It is. It's still did, a he, did you ever find him again? No. <laughs> it um, is a mystery. He wow. Was with a couple of my cousins in Wyoming. And it's a hunting trip he's he did for like 10 years. He used to go with my uncle all the time, my mom's um, uncle. Um, and they used to go out there all the time. And they went for like 10 years or so. And dad was an avid hunter. He loved hunting. And they were elk hunting in Wyoming. And they would camp out there for like a week. And they would go out from camp each day and then come back to camp at night. And um, my dad was a survival instructor in the Air Force. Oh, cool. And, and so when he was hunting, um, him and my uncle had set up protocols. And so when dad did not return to camp one night, the boys, my the younger generation of cousins was going out with my dad that time because my uncle that had gone with him had passed away. And so the younger generation followed the directions that dad and my uncle had set up and waited till sunrise the next day, two hours after sunrise. If they did not return to camp by then, then you go to the authorities. And they went to the authorities and it is to this day, I believe the biggest manhunt they've had in Wyoming on Elk Mountain. Wow. Oh my gosh. 
they used man trackers, they used helicopters, they had, uh, I think there was a, a prop plane that was used, uh, horseback, they had hundreds of volunteers out looking, they had um, cadaver dogs and scent dogs and they used everything at, at their disposal in Wyoming and um, they never found him, never found oh my gosh. anything he was wearing at the time. About five years later, because this was back in 2006. And in 2006, when they were doing this um, hunt and stuff, they um, didn't find anything. And then um, I think it was about five years later, somebody came across his gun. And it was just leaning up against a tree. So then they did another search with cadaver dogs and stuff in that area because it was outside of the perimeter that they had set before oh. and where he most likely would be. And so it was outside of that area. So they did another search in that area and they still have never found any remains or anything like that. Oh my gosh. So. Oh, tag. I'm, I see how much I learned. I did not know this. What trauma that had to be for you and your family. It was, it, uh, it was interesting um, because there's four girls in our family and um, they contacted my, my cousin that was with and he contacted his father and his father contacted my oldest sister. And so my oldest sister was 10 and a half months older than me. So that's part of the huge mindset shift I've had. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but, um, we'll have to dive into that in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but she contacted the rest of us girls, the rest of the my three sisters. And um, she said every one of us had a different reaction when she told us. You know, one of us got pissed. One of us was like, okay, well, what's this? The other one was like, yeah, but that doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. we all reacted differently. Right. And, we're really fortunate because um, when one of us is not really on, on the other one is, and oh, that's we awesome. have a wonderful support network oh. um, just in our family alone and the community at large it, that, I mean, I live in a pretty small town, but even to this day, people come and, you know, talk about my dad. Oh, and he, you know, he just had that personality that was wonderful. like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, that would probably annoy me, but I consider it a huge compliment <laughs> now. <laughs> well, uh, you know, all I can say is, uh, you know, I, I've never met anybody that I felt uh, more instant uh, charisma from than you and who I want. I just want to hang out with you. I, uh, you brighten my day every time I see you. And it sounds like you just described your dad in that same way. Yep. My dad and my mom both have wonderful personalities and people just uh -huh. adore them. You know, mom, everybody loves mom. She's a diehard Vikings fan. She has an entire room <laughs> set aside for Vikings. You know, I'm from Northwestern Minnesota. She's always been a Vikings fan. And um, so people are always like buying her little Vikings things because they've seen it and they thought of her, you know, yeah, so she yeah. has oh, everything that's neat. you can think of that has Minnesota Vikings <laughs> on it. <laughs> so how did your life change after your father disappeared? Um, well, at the time I was living in Fargo, North Dakota, and I was managing an optical store um, and I was doing what a lot of people do. You know, you work as hard as you can to pay the bills and you still struggle to make regular monthly payments for your apartment and your car. And it's not easy to, right. you know, on one income to make it. And I was doing all those things and I was working really hard and, um, 
before dad disappeared, I had thought about moving back home because I'm not a city girl. And part of me knew that, you know, I'm, I'm a country girl through and through. I grew up on a farm. I love my, my happy place is right upstairs on the deck sunrise. You know, that's my happy place is my, my front deck. <laughs> so, um, that's awesome. I had thought about moving home before dad disappeared and um, everybody's like, no, there's more men you can meet in <laughs> Fargo. There's better jobs in Fargo. Uh, no, you can't do that. You can't move back to the small uh, town. Um, then dad disappeared and I'm like, I don't want that to happen with my mother. You know, yeah. I want to spend time with her. My mom is wonderful. I adore her. She's one of my best friends. And I want to be able to spend time with her and and do stuff with her. And, you know, it's really worked out for the benefit because last, in 2019, she's had some unusual health issues. And in 2019, she had a kidney infection that went into her bloodstream and she was septic. And almost lost her. She spent over a month in the hospital. Um, and she's still kind of recovering from that because um, being in, in bed that long and being hospitalized that long, um, her back is still bothering her a lot. So she's still working sure. on, on getting, getting better with in certain areas. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm really fortunate. I maybe 50 and single, but I have a great life. You know, I do what I love to do. I can do it from home. I can spend time with my mom. You know, I can work for a couple hours, go up and hang out with her or help her do something or, you know, that's wonderful. Possible. And it, it, because I'm the boss, I can set the schedule. So. you don't have to check with anybody well you could ask you could have a meeting with your boss you can have a meeting with me myself and i and see if <laughs> could i, I have the day off? off yes you can have the day off <laughs> well today i you know didn't have anything scheduled except for chatting with you and i'm like because i was supposed to we were supposed to go to an appointment this morning with mom but she wasn't feeling well so we didn't go and i'm like well i could go down to the office and work but i'm like I have the day off. I did not schedule it to work. I I played a video game. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, you know, I have a wonderful life and I'm doing what yeah. I love doing, which is yeah. helping people. So And how old is your mom now? My mom turned 80 in December. So Wow. I'm so glad she survived that sepsis because you probably looked at the statistics when and it is very low percentage of people who survive. So yeah. I'm so happy that she did. Yeah, she was, it was uh, one of those things where she wasn't feeling really well. And I was trying to talk her into going in and getting checked out. And then I called the ask a nurse line in there because her blood sugar kept going up and up and up and up. Mm. Yeah. I called the nurse ask a nurse line and she said you need to get her to a hospital <laughs> and mm. I'm like okay so I said mother your choices are ambulance or I give you a ride <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, I love it believe my sisters were home that that weekend my sisters were home because it was uh it was hunting weekend and oh, wow. we still have like 20 anywhere is between 12 and 20 people come to our house every hunting season uh-huh. because um, dad was an avid hunter and this was a central location where everybody grouped, you know, yeah. and we still feed all the <gasps> hunters on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> every. Uh, That's amazing. You know, Saturday and Sunday morning of hunting. We feed all the hunters in the area. You have breakfast by. for them. <laughs> yep. that is amazing so all my sisters were home and um 
mom was not getting better. So we called the Ask a Nurse line. She said, well, I would suggest getting her in. And so I said, mom, these are your choices. Good for you. Good. Yeah, that's the, way, that's the way to handle it. And so where are you in the ages of your siblings? Four females, four. four yep. And where are you? There's four girls and I am the second oldest of the four girls. Okay. And I keep telling people that I was an accident. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> Mom wanted to go um, on birth control because she wanted to have her girls all two years apart. Ah, she had a plan. And she was planning, yes. And so uh, she went in for her checkup and the doctor's like, well, we can't start birth control right now. Because you're pregnant. Because <laughs> you're pregnant. Oh my gosh. So my that had to be sister, such a shock for her, huh? <laughs> my older sister is only 10 and a half months older than me. So she did everything first. So <laughs> part of my pathology was I could never be good enough because I could never catch up to her because she's always going to be ahead of me. <laughs> Not realizing at, you know, seven years old that she's supposed to be ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. So, so that's part of the mindset shift you had this year. What, what shifted for you? Uh, what shifted is I think I just started looking at, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to your podcast all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I listen to like, mindset mentors like David Nagel and Tony Robbins. I listened to, I can't even list all the people. So pretty much anything mindset related that I say is probably somebody else's stuff. <laughs> it, 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 it is for saying. all of us, including <laughs> them. Almost nobody has an original, you know, anything totally yeah. original anymore. Right. <clears throat> so yeah so I listen to a lot of times in my office I'll either have Christian music playing when I'm working on stuff or I will have a podcast playing in the background um, for mindset and stuff and and I was listening to those mindset stuff and um, I was listening to one of your podcasts and I heard one of your you were doing a podcast. I think it was, it was a Shannon Mattern. And mm -hmm. I started thinking to myself, well, yeah, but she's doing it. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> you know, it, what about those who are still not there yet? <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what can I, what, what can I do? You know, um, you're not talking to me. And so then I was listening to more podcasts and it's like, what gave you that thought? And I'm like, yeah, what gave me that thought? You know? And so I was, I was listening and I'm like, yeah, somebody needs to hear what I have to say because maybe they're <laughs> not quite there yet, but they're getting there. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I sent off an email before I could think about it to you asking about the podcast. And it was like, you sent an email back saying, yeah, fill this out. And I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> This oh, no, now it's going to be real. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was so excited. Leap before you think. <laughs> yes, good things happen. Yes. Exciting things, an adventure, a journey begins. Yep, exactly. And, you know, a lot of the best things in my life have happened that way. Oh, it's like, I you love know, that. It's, it's like... I was working nine to five. Um, you know, I've always been a hard worker. I've always been moved into management. I've always been, they could always rely on me to get anything done when they need it done. Um, and I was working really hard and I was trying to balance um, mom's medical stuff because when she came home from the hospital, she needed care. So I yeah. was doing all her appointments and I was still working 40 hours a week and I was still trying to run up all her appointments and take care of all the household stuff. And, and I was, I, between January and March, when I first seen your um, 
virtual expert training. Um, when COVID was hitting, um, yes, I had been sick, down sick, out of work. And it takes a lot for me not to be at work because usually they send me home because I'm sick. Not because I didn't go <laughs> they make you go I home. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually st- was sick enough that I physically could not go to work. Mm-hmm. And I was sick probably between January and March three times. So like every wow. few weeks I would go down. Wow. And I would go down for like 24, 48 hours and then I'd be back up and doing stuff. And uh, in March when I was sick that time, I was like, I can't keep doing this. You know, my whole body hurts. I'm not getting any younger. I cannot spend my life, you know, stocking shelves for 40 hours a week. And, you know, I'm just, my body can't take it. <laughs> right. You know, my right. knees hurt, my muscles hurt, my back goes out in like nine different spots. Oh my gosh. It's usually only a problem if it's more than three. I can handle up to three when it goes out. But if it oh goes my out gosh. more than three places, then I'm, I'm down for the count. But um, so there was a lot of things leading up to when I seen the advertisement for um, your virtual expert training. Um, And in 2018, I had tried again to start one a business. Mm -hmm. And I did start my artistic solutions now, which is my artwork. Um, Because I had like 150, 200 of them in my garage and they were doing nothing but collecting dust. Mm -hmm. So I started a business to sell them. But um, it doesn't do so good if you build a website and then don't tell anybody it's there. (laughs) <laughs> that is so true it, it doesn't magically let people know that it's there yeah exactly <laughs> so, like they're going to find it by accident so yeah. um I had tried that and I knew that I needed I needed support because I had tried other programs I had spent ten thousand dollars out of my 401k when I was working the 40 hours a week and trying to run the appointments and all that stuff. I, in 2018, I took $10,000 out of my 401k and I bought a program and they just didn't pay attention to me. (laughs) (laughs) They didn't give me everything I thought they should. And, and Uh um, so when I bought this program, I'm like, I know that I need help. I know that I have the talent to do this. You know, I can run an entire overnight shift with 12 employees and get everything done. Um, I can do this. Right. And when I was growing up um, in high school, I always wanted to be like a creative designer. Like, you know, I could see myself um, running an advertising agency in New York City. Cool. Uh, but you just don't do that from Beltrami, Minnesota. <laughs> you have a population of like 800. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just not done. Right. And I, wasn't, I knew that I wasn't ready for a big city life. And so I wasn't going to go to go to an advertising agency in New York City and apply. And I wasn't going to college for that because I knew that I wasn't going to New York City or Chicago or L.A., Right. Um, so uh, now I can create videos for people from my basement where yeah, I have a you can create art 60 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you can create art, you can create graphics, you can create and edit videos, you can create and design websites. You can do all of those creative things and things that business owners of every size and type need. From your farm. Exactly. So exciting. So many people, you know, like a lot of business owners could do it if they had to. Oh, sure. But why would, why would you spend the, 
hours and hours it takes to learn something, if you could pay somebody less than you make an hour yourself to do it for you. you That's know? right. And get it done better. Yeah. And you, you yeah, know, so I do it all the time. I know all the little tricks that save time and I know all the little mm -hmm. things and. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So for example, me, um, you know me well enough, Tag, that you know I am not techie at all. I mean, <laughs> like, not at all. So imagine when I first thought, hmm, WordPress website. Let me go read about this and see if I can set this up. Literally, you know, because you it, there's all kinds of free information out there. I yeah. go, I start reading. I'm maybe on paragraph two. And I literally stopped and Googled, is this in a foreign language? What language are they speaking? Because it was not English that I could understand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I knew none of the words. You know, I was going to have to, every little word, I was going to have to say, what does this mean? What does yeah. the next word mean? And I just literally sat there and thought, okay, I can't do this. But I can pay somebody to do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was smart exactly. enough to know that. I wasn't smart enough to be able to even begin to understand how to set it up, but I was smart enough to know I can pay somebody to do this. Exactly. And yeah. I'm also not good at, like, when I look at something, like when I look at your beautiful artwork or any of the graphics you create, I know what I like when I see it, but I don't, I don't have the creative concept capacity. Like, I couldn't tell you um, hey, why don't you create a picture that looks like one of those pictures back there? Or why don't you set up graphics that look like this? I couldn't tell you that. Yep. And you're able to, you have that vision. Yep. I love anything visual. I love. So yeah. Um, how yeah. colors go together, how um, different fonts give a different feeling, things like that. It, I love it because I love to get things to feel the way I want them to feel when somebody looks at it. Oh, I love that. You know, e emotions, um, that's what really turns people on. That's what really gets people excited is when they feel an emotion from seeing something visual. And that's what you provide. I yeah. love that. That's, that's powerful. That's what, I, that's what I shoot for every day. So, Yeah. And you know that I'm so glad you said that. I hadn't thought about that. But that's how I feel when I see your paintings, when I see your artwork, I feel emotional about it. And, and, you know, that's what gets people to take action. It's yeah. not, it, it is not so much the cerebral as it is the emotional that makes people go, yes, I want to work with tag. So I think we probably need to explain why I call you tag the artist formerly known as Tyrion Gustafson. <laughs> well, that <laughs> happened by accident. Um, <laughs> as uh, I think the, one of the first times I was signing on to one of our virtual expert training. Um, I on was Zoom? Still, yep, on Zoom. And I was still really, I had just named my business um my business itself is named Tay Gustafson LLC. And I have two businesses that are under that uh, umbrella business. And so I had signed on as Tay Gustafson because that's my business name is Tay Gustafson LLC. So I had signed on as Tay Gustafson. And so when you first see me, you see Tay. And so that was what stuck. <laughs> Yeah. So and I, you know, I always, tag. I always look at the, I always look at people's names and I'm like, tag. Oh, Hey, how are you? And later on, I saw that your name was really Terry and Gustafson. And I'd already learned that you were an artist. So, you know, of course, being the silly me, I'm like, tag the artist formerly known as Terry and Gustafson. And you're so fun. You let me, you let it stick. And I don't think you're going to be able to get rid of it now. When I do uh, like networking groups and stuff, because I have been starting to show up at networking groups and stuff, I, I put tag. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody went, is that what you want to be called? And I'm like, yeah. That's I, my yeah, name. That's, that's my nickname. 
<laughs> tag. That's right. It, it And it's memorable. I love it. I love it. I always wanted to be cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are cool. You are cool. You're very cool. Um, I always wanted to be eccentric and I have achieved it. I'm, I feel so fulfilled. <laughs> you always wanted to be cool and you are, I wanted, always wanted to be eccentric and voila, I have done it. <laughs> so Ted, could we, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Interrupted you. No, you go ahead. I was just getting ready to change the topic. I was just going to talk about the tiaras because I've oh, been yes, please. them for years and, uh, my niece would come over to hang out with grandma and we would wear our tiaras for eating lunch. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I love to be considered the eccentric on someday. <laughs> Ooh, that's why I like you so much. We are sisters. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, when we get together in person, which I'm um, guessing will probably be April of 2022, because that's our first live event in person, uh, bring your tiaras, bring as many of them as you want, because that'll be so fun. You wear a different tiara every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I believe me, I'd be bringing mine. That's a tiara wearing group. <laughs> I'll have to buy a few more because I don't, I don't have one with the, um, I want to get one with uh, sapphires in it because I like the Ooh. sapphire color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sapphires. That's blue. Sapphire's blue, yes. right? Yep. Emerald is green. So like this, this is my favorite one I have. Oh, so yeah. if you're not watching on video, I'm showing a tiara that has lots of blue. Yep. Love that. <laughs> it is actually this these are both made by the same person and um it's tina's tiaras and um she uses old brooches oh, and yeah. other baubles to create them and i just i i adore them i just love Those them are fabulous yeah thank you um okay so let's talk a little bit more about your business because people by now they've gotten to know you they're falling in love with you just like i did and they're like, creative, website, graphics, video editing. Yes, I need, I need. So who do you work with? What type of people do you prefer to work with? And um, well, let's do that first. And then I'll ask you the next question. So who do you work with? Who um, can you help? My ideal client, the per people I prefer to work with are business owners like yourself that know they need someone to do the creative side of things. Um, I prefer to do video editing. Uh, I can do websites. I can do graphics. I know how to do those and I like doing those, but I love creating video. So my ideal client would be somebody who is starting a podcast and wants to do both the audio and visual, like a YouTube channel, that sort of thing. I like to work with people or if they need shorts for um, advertising on their Facebook ads or that sort of thing to repurpose old content to um, get more use out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Repurposing content. That's huge. So I will tell you that, um, oh, do you know Instagram at all? I mean, and you don't need to know Instagram for this, but I have a question about it. If you know it. I do not. I'm started okay. to do some research, but I haven't gotten into Instagram yet. Okay. So you might want to look at this because somebody just told me that they are doing reels, R-E-E-L-S, I'm assuming is what they're talking about, on Instagram. And I'm assuming that's video. So I would look into that because she was saying that she's been repurposing all of her stuff into reels on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I need to look into that. So yeah. that might be something you can do. I know LinkedIn videos are hot, hot, hot now too. And of course, YouTube. So in Facebook ads and all of those things. So you can do little shorties. Um, you can do a little bit longer. Um, the latest research I've done, you know, I love marketing of all kinds, is 10 minutes or less is what people are really watching. And the less, the shorter is really better. And you know me, I'm very uh, long-winded. 
<laughs> so, so we're um, focusing on getting me shorter or editing lots of videos. So you tag, you could take somebody that's windy like me and take clips out of their long winded ones and create shorter versions. Couldn't you? Yep. Definitely. Yeah. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Or create actual little video ads and things like that, because it's, they're just, and again, I don't know the stats off the top of my head. I just read them this week, but the percentage of people who will click on and watch a video versus a printed word is like amazingly high, like maybe 80% higher or something like that than reading. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's because attention spans are so much shorter. That's you know, right. Nobody wants to read a 12 paragraph thing. They want right. to have it and they want to have it now. Yeah. They want a really fun, short or eye catching um, video yep. and move on. And that's what's going to catch their attention. And you can create those four people. Yep. I yeah, love I it. Just before we got on here, I was just condensing about three and a half hours into two minutes and 30 seconds oh my gosh <laughs> that's amazing wow cool so, so if you are looking for that type of work uh, to be done for you by the amazing tag how do they get in touch with you tag how can uh, they learn more about you they can go to my website, which is wow factor virtual solutions.com. Um, and you can book an appointment on my contact page there. And I would love to chat. Even if you just have questions about video and what can be done or that sort of thing. Um, I love chatting. So just. <laughs> you can love getting to know people. You have yep. that charisma. <laughs> Yep. Just give me, give, drop me a line and we can have coffee because I love having coffee talk. So, yeah. Um, and tiaras required, not required. No tiaras <laughs> require, required. Um, <laughs> but, um, and if you want to see, um, my artwork, you can go yes. to artistic solutions now.com which are the two businesses I was telling you I had under Tag Gustafson LLP. Yeah, awesome. And you've got beautiful pictures of your artwork up there and they're available to purchase, right? Yes. Yep, on my website you can see different colors. Um, like I'll do sometimes similar scenes in different colors. Um, so yeah, you can check out all the paintings on there. I leave them up even if they've sold to show different examples of what I can do. And if you like something that's been sold, but you want it anyways, or something similar in different colors or that sort of thing, I can do custom work as well. Wow, that's amazing. So tag, this has been so much fun. I could talk to you for another hour, but um, uh, the attention span might be getting short on this one too. So <laughs> we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you. You know, it's so funny because um, you guys, before we started this tag, I told tag, I said, it'll take about an hour total. And she goes, I don't have that much to talk about. And I said, oh, we could talk about, we could talk for much longer than that. And here we are talking for much longer. So thank you so much. I learned so much from you today and it was so joyful talking with you. And I highly recommend, if you cannot tell, I highly recommend tag. So if you're thinking about hiring somebody to do the type of work she does, or if you just want to get to know tag, go to her website. We will have links to both of her websites in the show notes, schedule an appointment to talk with her and you will not be sorry. Thank, Thank you so much tag for being here. Thank you, Kathy. Fabulous talking to you as always. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.